Knowles News. It's Knowles News. Hi, hey, young fella. Well, Noel, how are you? Melting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would take off the jacket, but I look so damn good in it. <laughs> it's very warm weather. Yeah, but I have the old cap to keep me the sun off me directly. Yeah, and do you still wear the leather jacket in oh, this heat? Oh God, yeah. And I have the thermal vest on. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case, yeah. So the odd day now I'd be down to the vest. And that's if, 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 oh, if we were really going hard now. Stuken. <laughs> Are you stuken bales this week? I am doing a bit, yeah. yeah. More normally I'd have young lads. You know what I mean? No point having a dog and barking yourself, <laughs> as, <laughs> as they say. Um, speaking of places that are hot, Egypt is our first news story this week. Lovely. Tell you about Egypt is, they haven't got, they have nothing out there, lad. They haven't even got stones. No? No. Did you ever see a picture of Egypt? Mm. Yeah. What have been on the ground? S- sand. Sand, yeah. yeah. They can't even afford stones, lad. <laughs> <laughs> they had stones and they gathered them all up <laughs> and they made the pyramids. Right. So they were just, just to get lads out of the house. But too many lads, it's a bit of a hobby for them. Something to do. Something to do. Okay. Like that's where we got the Galtee Mountains. Do you remember that? That's why the Galtee Mountains were made uh, in 1965 by the oh. Kappa White Dundrum Foss scheme. <laughs> <laughs> there were too many lads hanging around Dundrum Village, <laughs> up to no good. So that it was the then TD of Tipperary, Dan Breen, of course, in his last year before he retired in 1965. Dan, being from Denohill, of course, <laughs> said like, "There's only two jobs going now. It's either the Emily Tidy Towns or." <laughs> He went down mountains anyway, and that is why he got the nickname of the Galti Mountain Boy. I I I think so that's completely <laughs> untrue. <laughs> we're, we're, we're straight into it this week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> straight in, no kiss. So in Egypt, three thousand years ago, they had a um, king called Tutankhamun. Yeah, did you hear him? Yeah, done in first class history. It's yeah, n- he did now. <laughs> he got to be good to him. He actually died <laughs> 3,342 years ago. Yeah. Now, the grandfather said he met him once. <laughs> 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 said he was a nice lad. Nice fella. Yeah, the grandfather said to me, oh, Tootin' Cameron, yeah, I remember him. I met him at the Ballinasloe Horse Fair. <laughs> he had a drapery shop in Clonfert. And I said, Tootin' Cam. I said, that's fucking Toot Hanley you're thinking of. I <laughs> said, <laughs> Remember Toots at the drapery shop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking. But see, like, that was the thing with the grandfather. You never knew. <laughs> you never knew with the grandfather. Like, if he said to you, oh, I met a pharaoh of ancient, ancient Egypt, you know, like, he might have. <laughs> you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. The man got around. So, anyhow, this pharaoh, right, the story, he was buried 3,000 years ago. Then, in 1922, the Brits discovered him. Right? They found his tomb la- discovered it like there's a new fucking planet <laughs> <laughs> hungry fucking bastards discovered it right like he was exactly where the Egyptians put him <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't there wasn't a game of hide and seek gone wrong okay the man was dead uh, so he was in buried in the valley of the kings where everyone else is buried they opened it up and they found out he'd been buried with a load of handy stuff <laughs> he'd been buried with gold a bow and arrow a few pints, a change of underpants, a dog, a woman, a trumpet, and a stone bust. <laughs> Do you know what a bust is? Yeah, it's a kind of head and... Like a statue of your head. Yeah. Right? A mock-up of your face, right? But this bust, some lad swiped it, and now it's on sale oh. in Christie's auction house for $6 million. Wow. Jesus. Some lad stole that. Around the 1970s. <laughs> and it's on sale. Okay. At Six million dollars. Cheers, I'd hate to see what the full price would be. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sale price. So the Egyptians are pure take. They want it back. They said it shouldn't be on sale at all. So some lad's going to make a fortune out of it. Didn't me. Didn't yeah, you. No. Didn't the Egyptians. <laughs> so they're taken up as you can imagine. But the question is, should the auctioneers be allowed to sell it or should they give it back? Finders keepers, is it? Well, yeah, if you found it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't deal job. Don't, don't. So, um, anyway, they want to put it on display uh, because they're making a big deal out of this Tootin' Cameron fella. 
Okay. Big deal about Tutankhamun. He was made king at the age of nine. Right? He married his cousin and died at the age of 19. Jeez. Like, I was club treasurer at eight years old. (laughs) (laughs) I don't make a song and dance about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, money went missing sometimes. (laughs) I was eight years old. I swallowed a few shillings. What do you want? (laughs) Did you ever marry your own cousin? No, I did not. (laughs) Marry Carmel. There was enough hardship for one man's life. (laughs) So, I have him here. This man married his own cousin, died at the age of 19. Like, was he the king of Egypt or Port Leash? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so that's ancient Egypt. A rough crowd. A rough crowd, ancient Egypt. That's the story. Six million for the statue oh. of his head. Are you interested in getting it? I'd probably leave it off. <laughs> it's right. supposed to be nice now on the front pier of the house. Don't don't you, don't you a matching one. Yeah. <laughs> but um, now... Second story of the week. Michael Jackson. You're nervous now. <laughs> I'm sweating even more in here now. A gas man, right? We remember Michael Jackson. Everybody remembers, say, the moonwalk. Mm. Where he kind of looks like he's trying to wipe shit off his shoe. You know that kind of a thing? <laughs> he's coming in across your mother's front mat and he's kind of dragging <laughs> shit in around the house with him. <laughs> Michael Jackson, what else do you remember? Remember he always had the pants too short? Yeah, yeah. Remember? And people don't realize that he wore the, the short leg pants so that they wouldn't get caught in the chain of his bike <laughs> when he was cycling. That's what they call a life hack. Okay. Right? And a lot of people don't know Michael Jackson was very fond of the cycling. He actually <coughs> won the 1972 Fair Care Under 14 bike race. He did a lap of the town in nine minutes. Oh, yeah, he smashed... Beefy has its record by a whopping 90 seconds. Oh. And that is when he wrote his hit song, Remember the Time. <laughs> and his record stood for 30 years. Wow. Yeah, he was the only boy with a, a racing bike. <laughs> we also remember the cap he used to wear. Remember Michael Jackson's cap? Mm-hmm. A black fedora. See, years ago, when I was young, though, the only people who wore them would have been detectives. <laughs> In our guard. You know what I mean? Yeah. In our black fedora. And Jackson, he was a bit of a pop in his day, I'll tell you that now. He was hanging around with fucking, what's, you know, young lad down the road, Dusty Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> he used to hang around with Dusty Darcy, and they'd be going around robbing bottles of milk from the priest's house. And he'd be gone on the bike, on the, on the <laughs> racing bike. And that is when he wrote his song, Smooth Criminal. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a lot of good songs, in fairness to him, good old pop. But see, his old... You know, the Jackson story now has been tarnished. Of course, caused all the claims mm. against mm. him. And there was a television show called Leaving Neverland. And two men said that he was doing things he shouldn't have been doing. Mm. Right? But now, there's a twist in the tale. Because there's in France, there is three Michael Jackson fan clubs. And they're suing. They're suing the guys who made a television show. Saying you can't be saying that. The man is dead. He's not here to defend himself. Mm. Right? Now, in France, the law is different. It says, you know, defamation. Yeah. You can't say that about somebody or they'll sue you. Yeah. But if they die, you can say all you want and they can't, they're not around. They can't do nothing. Yeah. But in France, you can sue for dead people. Right. So they're going to take any case. Um, so it's like, fucking in France, they do it differently, as all I'll say. <laughs> So Dermot told me after Eddie Whelan's day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, but to, to his guess, isn't it? It's like, you know, never speak ill of the dead. Mm. Like, we'd say that. Remember, oh, Jimmy was the gas man, like, and he was the greatest prick. Yeah. Well. Ever drink tea, like. So, <laughs> do you know how much they're suing for? Well. A euro. To just for the fact. Just for the, just for, like, like an angry woman in a fight. <laughs> just to be right. Regardless <laughs> of how, what it costs. They're going to lose money on this thing. Anyway. I mean, but that's women. And French women, again, I'd say, could be <laughs> cantankerous enough when they want to be. Do you know what I mean? Jess Carmel, she was fucking cantankerous enough when she wants to be too. Yeah. Yeah, she came home the last day and she was having the ICA women over after after the meeting and um, she got in anyway and uh, she says to me, Noel, where's the pavlova? And I said, I don't know. And she said, Noel, I spent all day baking and you're after coming in and eating the whole lot. And I said, Carmel, 
Let's not live in the past. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like Pavlova. Okay, I gave Pavlova to the dog, right? But he was looking at me cross-eyed all evening. <laughs> and I knew he liked strawberries, so I gave the dog to Pavlova. Then there was a carrot cake there, and I gave it to a sick calf because they, they like carrots. But anyway, Fuck. I'm just saying, don't speak ill of the dead unless you're prepared to be sued by the French. Okay. Um, do you know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. Okay. Do you, remember, do you remember Michael Jackson when he was around town? No. <laughs> no, no, strangely, no. Before your time. Yeah. Guess man, when he was young, he'd be down in the park and he always had the old bottle of fizzy juice. Yeah. The old uh, fizzy pop, an old bottle of orange or an old bottle of fizzy coke and he had it when nobody had it. Oh. And that is where he got the nickname, the King of Pop. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> Just saying, you know, watch what you're saying now, because they yeah. can see, you know, so. Um, local news, uh, big news, the Ross Dreyhead car boot sale is back. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> it's back. The first Sunday of every month will never be the same again. <laughs> <laughs> and when I heard the committee, the community committee of Ross Dreyhead were getting back together. Oh, it was like the Beatles getting back together. <laughs> this is big, right? Or the Bay City Rollers, or somebody like that. <laughs> Bay City they Rollers. met in the hall, and they agreed to put their differences behind them. See, there's a right bit of niggle there. You have the village people, and you have the mountain lads there. <laughs> the village people. Yeah, well, see, there's a right bit of niggle there. Because the mountain lads, you know, they want more of the festival kind of up on the hill on their side of the parish. And then, of course, the village people are a pop band from 1978. <laughs> 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 they moved to Ross Dreyhead after a big hit, YMCA, and they opened the village inn. Rasa Dreads second best gay bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the first course is Hassan's. <laughs> <laughs> they have agreed to work together to get the car boot sale back again, right? The negotiations it was like war. I thought we were going to have to get Kofi Annan <laughs> in. It was like the West Bank there for a while, right? Now the committee, I'm I'm calling out now to all your listeners. They're looking for more stall holders to to set up. At the car boot sale. They currently have a man in a van selling tools. <laughs> right? He's the first man to sign up. He's very good. I went down to meet him. And I, I was I was looking for a set of spanners. Because I used to have a right good set of spanners. And th- they got robbed years ago. And when I went down, this fella had the exact same set. <laughs> and he even had my name on him. Go away. So it's as fucking as handy as that now. Yeah. I, I bought them. <laughs> Um, and there's going to be a woman selling dogs, <laughs> <laughs> selling pups. Uh, of course, you know I'm looking for a dog. Yeah. Mm. I'm looking for particularly a fine-haired German Shepherd pup. <laughs> fine-haired. Yeah. Um. Of course, I had to get rid of the Labrador after he became a racist. <laughs> 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 he was watching too much that whole fair city. I swear to God, every time Neve came in, he started triumphing the cat. <laughs> Well, and Labrador is driven demented and carry on. <laughs> and there's a vintage machinery area with some lovely trashing machines <laughs> and uh, there'll be a display of plows as well. Okay. And I just think it's wonderful that we have this, this link back into our own local history. And if they don't draw a crowd, I'm selling them for scrap. <laughs> <laughs> um, Peggy Quirk is doing the tea. Siobhan Lonergan is on bun patrol. Uh, no more than two buns per man. Okay. Just whatever she uh, she puts in too much that bacon soda blow the head off you. <laughs> the first day I went down, I ate nine of Siobhan's buns. I woke up in a hotel room with the Prince of Monaco. <laughs> <laughs> now two grown men, we just hugged it out. <laughs> we sorted out our differences, but you know, that's the Ross and Dread car boot sale for you in a nutshell. That's it, mate. So uh, it's back this Saturday, uh, back this Sunday, and if uh, if you know anybody who wants to get in touch to be a stall holder, uh, contact Joe Cleary of the Hall Committee or you can call 83 and ask for Mick the Stick. <laughs> <laughs> that is the Ross Dread car boot sale. It's back. Stick. It's back. <laughs> and that, that, is, that is the big news. That's the big news this week. Yeah, the first Sunday of every month, it's going to be big. Okay. Okay. 
Thanks a million. I'm going away now. We'll see you next week. God willing. <laughs>